Okay, oh my god, it's been such a long time. It's only been two weeks. So first up, I'm really sorry about not keeping to my schedule last week. I know I was meant to put a video up for you all, but something very minor came up and it just threw a spanner in the works for everything. So I decided to just take that week off and try and work things out. Spoiler alert, it didn't work out, but I'll explain later. I'm so sorry, it's gonna be another Talking Heads video. I am kind of stuck in the studio or stuck to the uh, easier to accomplish videos for the time being, just for the next week. Uh, let's get on with it. Today we're gonna to talk about the scale of production. I know I say this all the time in my videos, especially about camera assisting. It depends on the job. It depends on the scale of the job. It depends on what you're doing, those sort of phrases. And that really is true. What you do as a camera assistant, as a first AC, as a second AC, it varies. And it depends on whether you're doing a long form, if it's a feature film or a TV series, or if you're doing a commercial job, if it's a big budget commercial or a smaller budget commercial, or if you're doing an independent thing like an independent short or an independent feature even, or maybe even if you're doing a music video. It varies a lot. Now again, things may be slightly different where you live. They should mostly be the same though, so you should have no worries, but you've just got to think about some of the processes that I talk about in my video and try and relate it to where you are yourself because your industry, your film industry, uh, or even individuals in your film industry may have been taught slightly differently and therefore may teach you slightly differently. It comes up sometimes and if it is different please leave a comment down below because I'd like to hear your processes for doing things or ways that you've learned how to do things and we can start a conversation because we are a very international community here so it is nice to hear those different methods and other people from other parts of the world can learn as well. Okay so first up I want to talk about first ACs on long form but let's talk a little bit about long form production first. Arguably long form production is one of the most structured working environments. It has a hierarchy to it, a very strict hierarchy to it, and really it's one of the best places to cut your teeth and start learning. You'll notice that a lot of camera attachment roles happen to be on long form productions because you're pretty much going to work every single day and doing exactly the same thing every single day in a very structured manner, so you learn a lot quicker. So let's talk about the structure of a camera department in that field, in that long form field. So you'll be looking at a DP or a cinematographer. Uh, they will be the head of the camera department. And then after that, you'll have camera operators. Now that can be A camera, B camera, C camera. Your DP doesn't necessarily have to be an operator as well. Like sometimes they might wanna sit back and more focus on lighting or whatever, but sometimes they can nominate an operator and that will be a camera operator. And then you have a first AC that's usually per camera. And then you have a second AC who is sometimes per camera. So you'll have a B camera second and a C camera second, and a D camera second, that just keeps going. But sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes it'll be one or two second ACs sort of fielding both cameras or whatever that situation might be, there might not be one assistant per camera. And then you have vid split operator, video split operator and truck loader. Now sometimes these last two are kind of lumped in together, they kind of go as the camera attachment sort of job, I guess. That's a different story, we're not going to talk about that today, we're just really focusing on first and second AC. So the first AC, the first camera assistant, the focus puller, the person who makes sure that everything is uh, sharp. Now if there is more than one camera, the first AC on A camera is going to be on top in the hierarchy of the B camera, first AC, etc, etc, that's just the way that structure works. But even though I say there's a hierarchy and you're the boss of this person, there's no real boss per se. I mean, yes, that structure is still there and yes, you still respect it, but it is still a team effort. As the first AC, you're responsible for building the camera and making sure that the kit is good and in working order and suitable for the job. So you attend all the gear check and the gear return and all of that happens with you there. Now you as the first AC are the main link between the DP and the rest of the team. So you relay any messages from the DP to the rest of the team to get it done quickly and efficiently. And that's why it's really important to always have open ears, always be listening out for the next setup, the next lens, uh, any sort of movement that will help you be ahead on the day. On the day, I need to stop saying on the day. I 
freaking hate that phrase. So because you're gonna be listening so often, you're more often than not next to the camera and making sure that it's ready to move at any point in time. You will sometimes take the camera off the DP if you're doing especially a handheld shot just to relieve them of that weight. This is unless you've actually got a dedicated camera grip on the team. If you don't, you'll be doing it, but if so, if you've got a dedicated grip there who is responsible for taking and moving that camera, that's possible as well. More often than not, you will be in charge of everything in that kit. You are the head of that assisting team, therefore you must know it back to front. You'll also make sure that your assistants are on top of everything and that you will pack down and transport that equipment in most cases. That's why a lot of camera assistants have vans or trucks. On commercial jobs as a first AC, it's pretty much the same as a long form. There are slight differences in your roles and responsibilities on that day. I said it again. You're still the head of the camera assistant department. You're still responsible for all the equipment, the gear check and the gear drop. You're still almost always next to the camera. You're still listening very intently for any direction. But everything's just a little bit more laid back. That's probably the wrong phrase, but everything's a little bit less of a hierarchy. Often because there's less crew on those jobs, so it is a little bit more hands-on. You make the most of the situation without as many crew members. So everything kind of becomes a little bit more simple to complete, to be honest, because you've got less crew, yes, and you do have to accommodate for having less crew, but you've also got less equipment to carry around. Well, generally speaking, you've got less equipment to carry around. So your gear check is a lot simpler. Your gear return is a lot simpler. It's just a lot better of a process, a lot quicker of a process. I wouldn't say better, just quicker. This is generally speaking, I've been on some commercials where it's been a really hard day. In independent productions, yeah, your job does pretty much stay the same, but you become a lot a lot more hands-on so you will be moving the camera you will be doing a lot of heavy lifting you will be doing a lot of transport keeping on top of things because there is even less of a crew than on a commercial this is all in most cases a generally speaking sort of stereotype i guess i'm just giving you the the basics of each scenario second ac this is where things get really interesting because oh oh boy you've got a lot of work it's fun work though so you know, let's talk about long form. So you have a lot of responsibilities. You have responsibilities coming out of your ears. So you know the kit back to front, you attend gear checks and gear drops. You know where absolutely everything is. Organization is your jam. At the end of the day, you take the batteries home to charge. Well, I mean, you can split it up between all of the ACs, but yes, you are one of the people who will take batteries home to charge for the next day. You help in the camera build and making sure that all of the accessories that are required are on the camera in the morning. You keep on top of battery swings and card swings or mag swings, making sure that you tape up the cards correctly to be sent off to be data wrangled because you're probably not gonna be data wrangling them. In fact, I have never been on a long form production where the second AC has been the data wrangler. It's always been by somebody completely different. So they get sent off separately, which means you have to be completely on top of that tape to make sure everything is labeled correctly because it's not going to you, it's going to somebody else who wasn't there. You also swing lenses with the first AC, which I forgot to mention in the first AC part. Well, now you know. You write camera reports. Yes, I'm making a video on this, please wait. You keep reports on any damage to equipment or accessories, and you report any breakages or anything that went missing. That all gets sent off to production office. Now, let me just say here that you are the main link between the production office and the rest of the camera department. So if anything goes wrong, like something breaks, or you need extra equipment or accessories to make something work, you will be the point of call to the production office. However, I do want to say here that like first ACs, the second AC on a camera is usually the person who will do that. You carry so much stuff on you. You've got batteries, cards, tape, markers, a slate. Check out my video on a camera assistance kit because that will help you in working out what you need. You make sure all the gear is in working order, cleaned and maintained. And like I said before, you've got a slate, so you slate. So as a second AC on a commercial gig, 
things do change slightly. The main difference is more often than not on a commercial, you won't have a video split operator. So you're gonna be responsible for the monitors and that's actually one of your highest priorities on your list. Client does not want to wait. The first thing I would do as a camera assistant when I would rock up on a commercial shoot is I would scout out the location. I would work out exactly where I can put client monitor. I would work out where I can put my data kit as well as battery charging. That all kind of goes together because you have to consult a first AD or a production manager, whoever is on set who can tell you that sort of thing. Sometimes that changes. And also the gaffer to work out if you can actually plug in that spot, if that's okay with them. Ideally, you won't put the data wrangling in with the client either, but you can put your data wrangling kit with the battery kit. That's typically what I used to do. Kind of depends on how far away it is from the rest of the set. So whether you're wrangling or not is actually determined by production. So production will usually give you a call. Usually it's a PM that will give you a call and they'll ask you whether you're happy to do the data wrangling. You can say you're not happy that's totally fine, but they will ask you. So sometimes you'll be doing it, but sometimes you won't be doing it. Sometimes it will be a dedicated data wrangler, which is the dream. And other times it'll just be somebody else on the production, which is not great. I mean, you wanna make sure that they're competent in doing that sort of job because it's something you don't wanna do half-assed. Anyway, you will swing lenses as you would normally on a long form production. You will do that again on a commercial, that doesn't change. Sometimes you'll do reports, but most of the time you won't because these sort of productions are a little bit smaller scale and reports just often aren't necessary, which is great because I hate camera reports. They're handy, yes, but they're a right pain to keep filling out. You still carry a kit and a slate and you still do slate. You swing cards and batteries and really that should be seamless. The first AC shouldn't have to know about it. But this time, more often than not, you're also charging batteries as well. But the one thing that you most likely won't be doing is the gear check and the gear drop. That is unless you're asked. So pro tip at the end of the day, go over absolutely everything because it is your job to know the kit back to front still. So as long as you know that everything's been packed down into its corresponding box and that everything is ticked off a list or at least that everything is there, that's cool. Also remember to check the bottom of your bag because in your kit bag, things can get lost really easily. And if you pop a card in a side pocket or pop some sort of battery in the bottom of your bag, it can slide down, it can get lost. You've, you've just got to make sure that you've cleared out your whole kit. To be honest, in an independent production or a lower budget production, your role doesn't really change too much here. But I do want to say that if you're a first AC, it can change if they decide to make you the only AC because that means you're doing absolutely everything I just said. Everything, including data wrangling, including slate, everything I just said you will be doing, which isn't ideal, especially with data wrangling. So what I would recommend if you've been asked to be the only AC on something, I would recommend speaking to production beforehand and asking if they could get somebody who can do data separately, whether it is somebody on the production team who is competent in it or whether they hire somebody else, just to get that off your chest. Because having to do data wrangling and having to do the job of two people is not fun. And it really, really shouldn't be done on a production, on any production, because it just puts everything on you. And if something goes wrong because you've not been paying attention or you've been spread too thin, that's that's really bad. So I know this is a really boring video and it, it is just a talking heads thing. So I am really sorry about that, but look, okay. I have some really great ideas for some videos about camera assisting and some not about camera assisting, but I am currently stuck in the studio because I have simply run out of time because I sold my camera. I'm not using my a7r right now i'm actually using a friend's a7r who was very kind to lend it to me the timing was just wrong i sold the camera and then i was ready to shoot something but the person who wanted to buy it came and bought it great cool i'm okay with that but then i realized i haven't actually shot anything for this week oh dear what do i do but i already had a camera on its way cool no worries then what happens shipping delay yeah <laughs> It just didn't work out timing wise, okay? It's a boring story, there you go. You'll know that now I'm getting a new camera and I will have it next week, so hopefully I can get out, fingers crossed, and do some of these cool ideas for you guys. I know you guys really like the camera assisting tip stuff 
and that was really unintentional where my channel went that way. I'm really happy you're enjoying them and I really like making them, but I would also like to make some other content as well. So I hope you're okay with that too. If you did enjoy the video, please remember to give it a big fat thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my face and learn a little bit more about filmmaking in the process, remember to subscribe and I'll see you later.